recording in progress. Oh, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Recording in progress. I'm not catching a blank fire police. So I'll have to cut this off. Fire police, IT law, building a housing, finance, service. Mm -hmm. I did have a brain freeze on the last two. I sent one to. Parks and Recreation, Parks. and then with the law department. I don't know. Okay. Oh, the housing. Okay, I'm building the house. Yeah. Can I sent community development. Community development. Yeah. We have six six thirty one. We're going to just give it a few minutes. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone at home. Thank you for joining us on the, on the Zoom platform. We just um, 
that's waiting on a call. Really appreciate you all joining us this evening. Hello, Councilor. How are you? Well, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Thank you, Councilor, for keeping me on point. Thank you, Councilor. I am ready. You bet. We're going to uh, start it, Madam Clerk. Go to roll, please. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. The City of East Cleveland Personnel and Appointments Committee, uh, Thursday, September 28th. Time is 6.35 p.m. It's now called to order. Madam Clerk, we call the roll, please. Yes, can everybody hear okay? Can everybody hear us? I just heard everybody talking. Yes. I can hear. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. I'm going to call the roll, Councilor Smith. Present. Councilor Austin. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Again, I just want to um, say thank you to everyone joining us in person and on the zoom platform uh, thank you for taking your time out to see about your health interests rights and needs thank you for uh our, our special uh, guest on the line um chief warley is, is on the line and we're going to start with chief warley i um i asked the directors um to join us tonight just to get a, a update on the numbers um, of each department and um, any any uh, anything that the departments might need from council. So just just wanted to get an update from each department. So really wanted to thank uh, thank you for joining us, um, Chief Woodley. Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we start with uh, Chief. I think the council. Is there anything the council can do to assist our great fire department in your efforts to serve the health, which is rights and needs of, the, of, the, of this great city? Uh, well, I guess as, as long as uh, the council and the mayor can continue to work together to uh, help us figure out uh, how we can get our firefighters more money so that we can get more firefighters in here 
At this time, our department is uh, down a few guys. We lost into other cities. Um, and so we need to get members in here. We're just having a tough time at this moment. I have about six interviews lined up for this week, so I'm hoping it'll be positive ones. Uh, but I know that's one of the big things that we're in need of at this moment is more manpower. Uh, we appreciate you all working hard to get us that, um, to, to get the approval to get that used engine. As I explained to you, uh, that, that is a temporary fix that we can use for a good while, uh, but we would also like to steal, uh, like we, I know you all would like for us to have a new uh, fire engine and another new squad, something that this city could use because we work really hard as our guys today just had a fire over on Shaw. Uh, Avenue, and uh, it was an entire house fully in, in golf and flame. So uh, our, our equipment gets used really heavy in the city. And so um, anything that could be done to assist us or sing to it that uh, we can get this equipment when necessary. Um, and as far as that, that really for the most part is it. We do have the new truck. Just talk to the company that's building it. Um, they confirmed that everything is on schedule. We should take ownership of that before the year is out. Um, so at this moment, uh, those are my two pressing needs, manpower, as well as uh, more equipment. Awesome. I was going to ask you about the schedule of the truck. Awesome. Um, Councilman Austin, you have anything for Chief Worley? Chief Worley, I want to say thank you for all, all that you do. Keep us safe. Thank your team for always responding to those late calls, whether medical or fire. We do, we do appreciate, I think that we understate sometimes the capacity of the fire department to respond to our medical needs as well. So for that, I wanna thank you. And ask if there is how the um, wellness checks are, are, are doing. I'm sorry, I missed that one last part you said. The wellness checks. As far as which wellness as, checks are you talking about? I'm talking about as far as the residents being able to have someone from the fire department or the robocall, so to speak, call them and check oh. on our residents. Oh, yeah. Any, anytime a resident calls, um, we, that's never an issue for us to go to get to them uh, to check and see. We all constantly do uh, wellness checks I'm on the phone with different residents on a regular basis um, to see to it that they get what they need or at least direct them in the right direction if it's something that doesn't fall under the scope of the fire department. Um, but as for right now, everything seems to be going okay with that. Uh, you know, doing a, this is a season where, the, you know, alarms and smoke detectors are, are necessarily necessary and relevant. Uh, is there a plan for the alarm system to be replaced and or free um, smoke detectors? So I still, I've been working with Red Cross still, um, trying to get them. Right now, everything is going um, as far as the entire county goes, most counties, everything goes through Red Cross as far as uh, smoke detectors go. Um, the residents simply have to call the Red Cross um, and what they'll do is they'll give them the information of what city they're in, their address, um, how many that they would need. And then they would ship those to us and we'd come and install them for them. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Chief. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that's a little overview, Chief Ward. You have six interviews coming up this week. The, the new um, truck is on schedule, and um, you, you need a little bit more help with manpower and equipment. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and thank you all for your service. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And uh, like I always say, I would welcome uh, for all the council or for any uh, citizen that is there, if you ever want to come to the department, and ask questions face to face or just come in for a look around, uh, you're always welcome to do that. Appreciate the invite. Thank you, Chief. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Uh, may I speak? Absolutely. Yes, I had a conversation today with um, Mr. Antonio Marshall and the HR Director Belinda Kyle and they are interviewing for CDL drivers and who can drive a salt truck. So I think that there are some um, interviews that are being scheduled next week. If you know anybody with a CDL, um, please welcome them to apply. I think it's still on the website and um, 
we're in dire need. I guess part of the problem might be the um, low pay, but you know, they're doing their best to address that. Uh, also with reference to building and housing, I spoke this morning with the community development director, Mel Rand Leach, and I believe he has 45 applications, but I don't know how many of those applications are licensed building inspectors. So if you know anyone that's a licensed certified building inspector, uh, please invite them to apply on the, uh, on the website uh, for the law department. We are still looking for a, uh, a paralegal with experience in doing legal research, writing briefs, um, fluent in computer software packages, uh, such as Word, um, Excel, and um, being able to organize and manage uh, uh, cases. So um, other than that, I think that uh, we're looking forward to the discussion on the appointment of um, Reverend Phyllis Mosley to the Civil Service Commission. Thank you, Madam Law Director. Um, CDL drivers being interviewed next week. That's from the HR and Service Department. Uh, building mm -hmm. housing has 45 applications, but we don't know how many of the yeah. applicants are licensed building inspectors. And the Law Department is looking for you know, paralegals, fluid and computer software, work, Excel, et cetera. Thank you very much for the update, Madam Law Director. Really appreciate Great it. Thank appreciate you. your support. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Councilman Austin. Greeting, Madam Law Director. Thank you very much for all that you do. You just out of <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Focus. Uh, I do have a couple of notes I want to run by you. Uh, okay. Somebody off tomorrow. Um, okay. As far as the law department is concerned, I, I see that you got a, a couple of uh, vacancies. And are there any other things that would possibly help you in, in your quest um, to keep us, you know, focused, driven, um, on the right path? And what, if anything, can we do legislatively to assist? Well, um, we are putting an ad on the website for Cleveland Marshall uh, for two student law interns. Uh, we lost a very uh, good one from Case Western Reserve Law School to Cleveland. She got a $5 raise, so you can't blame her for leaving. Um, we're at $15 an hour. However, other competitive uh, law departments and law firms are offering uh, comparable students, particularly two L's and three L's, $17 an hour and $20 an hour. So we kind of like uh, are not really competitive in terms of uh, the salary realm. Now, a lot of work to break the one L and two L down for the group, if you would. What does that oh. mean? <laughs> 1Ls are first year law students, 2Ls are second year, and 3Ls are third year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have my water record. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right, my nose, excuse me. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Thank you, Madam Law Director. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I apologize. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any other directors on the line? No, I don't believe we do. Uh, I'm on the line. Fine, sir. Yes, that is my guy. That's Director Charles Ian of Finance. Oh. The voice anywhere. Excuse me, Director. 
How you doing, Mr. Sure. Director? Good. Uh, is there anything that council on the whole can do to assist our great finance department in serving the health, riches, rights, and needs of the people of East Cleveland? Honestly, I don't think so at this point. Um, I think it's it is uh, a lot of administrative far as strategies is concerned in 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 our in our hiring practices and in terms of just um, it is as you all probably already know it is very hard to hire people nowadays and it's not necessarily just because of the dollars it's also just because there's people who kind of just don't want to work. Uh, I had um, a vendor of ours that I dealt with a um, couple um, couple of years now, and he wasn't able to um, provide service for me like we would normally have because he said he doesn't have the manpower. He can't find people to um, work. So um, I have in my department, two positions that have been open since uh, one been, been open for um, since I'll say February and one has been open since July and I've been trying to hire those two positions since the end of July and haven't been successful um, between people who would um, say they want to interview and they'll accept the interview and don't show up. And then you have people who do show up to the interview and maybe come for another interview. And then they'll decline the offer and um, money, they say it'll be a factor, but they also get some other factors as well. But um, I'm still looking, My the jobs that um, Director Hemmings mentioned, all the jobs are not only on East Cleveland that or um, website, they're on Indeed, which is one of the popular job boards out there. So the jobs, we're posting the jobs out there, um, but you know, we, either we're not getting the actual quali qualified candidates or um, you know, people are um, not following through on, on, in the process. So um, legislatively wise, I, I don't know at this time um, what can be done. I think it, it, it's uh, the administrative just has to, we have to sit down more and really you know think harder about what's transpiring. It's not just happening to us. It's, it's just more emphasize for us because yes we have always had a wage issue but all organizations and in all industries and you, again you guys probably know this from people uh, going to the fast food place and, and they saying uh, we're closed because we ain't got no workers um, so it's something that's affecting everybody and we just gotta um, put our heads together to try to figure out some solutions Mr. Director, um, can you tell us the uh, official title of the two positions that are open for the finance uh, uh, department? Payroll Administrator and Chief Accountant. And, you know, the, the Chief Accountant, yeah, I would say Payroll Administrator, but definitely Chief Accountant it's not necessarily, I'm not going to say it's competitive, but I, I'm, it, I don't think it's chump change either. Um, I think something, and even some of the candidates I've considered uh, bringing on, they're not necessarily at that level. I'm, I'm willing to bring somebody on who it will be definitely a promotion for them. Um, as far as the, the responsibilities they the experience they have and the qualifications they have. And, you know, there will be a promotion for them. And, and even still with that, um, it's not you know, necessarily going well. But those are the two positions that I'm, I'm looking for. Okay. Um, Mr. Director, um, 
Okay. Um, all right. Uh, two positions open since February of 2021 and the other since July of 2021. Jobs list, job listed on the East Cleveland website and indeed for yep. payroll administrator and chief accountant. Thank you, Mr. Director. Councilman Austin, everything for Director Ian. You know, I, I did want to echo your comment about it being difficult to find workers. Um, I am also having problems finding you know, qualified persons that actually want to come to work. Mm -hmm. So um, it's heavy to hear that there are so many vacancies in a city where there are opportunities for people to actually work and they just, you know, respectfully on those opportunities. Yeah. Um, so I hope it, gets, hope it gets better soon. Um, the federal government, I guess, issued a statement a couple of weeks ago talking about how they were going to do everything they can and encourage people to go back to work. And the pandemic had a say. And while it's not over yet, there are still opportunities that you know, people are just not capitalizing on. Um, so I don't know how the federal government is going to respectfully almost I'm going to say strongly encourage people to go back to work, but um, I, I just want to give you a high five and tell you continue to march and you're doing a phenomenal job as a finance director. It's great to see. Appreciate you. Thank you for the words. And yeah, that's, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really has to be said there. We were, we're, it's a battle everybody's facing and, and um, hopefully, like you said, some people will start to want to um, get back to some kind of, some kind of work in, in the next few months. Charles, can I add something? Yep. Hi, this is Melinda. So um, you thank doing? you, Charles. You've done a really good job of kind of uh, illuminating the issue we face. One of the um, strategies we are using, we are currently <laughs> working with the Ohio Means Jobs. Um, it's the county workforce development arm. And we have a couple of different um, irons in the fire with them. Number one, we are planning a live here, work here job fair where we're working with the local businesses and agencies and organizations to curate their current job openings so that we can invite our community, East Cleveland residents, to attend this job fair and learn about the many opportunities that exist within the borders of our city. So for those folks where transportation to work may have been a barrier, we see this as a way to kind of mitigate that um, barrier. Additionally, we are working with Ohio Means Jobs in our public safety sector. Currently we are developing a program, there are workforce development dollars available to pay for the police academy and the fire academy. Uh, I've uh, worked with Mayor King and Mike Smetley, and we've determined that we want to recruit locally from our own community for public safety. And Ohio Means Jobs will provide funding for those eligible um, who qualify for that funding to complete the academy at no cost to them. So that's another um, project we have in the works with Ohio Means Jobs. And then additionally, um, Ohio Means Jobs has provided, and this doesn't necessarily speak to us internally, but more externally, um, we'll be working with the community um, by providing us a workforce um, liaison to assist our residents in finding employment. And hopefully some of our residents will find employment with the city and again, uh, the local businesses that are here in our, within the borders of East Cleveland. Uh, Charles and I talk often about um, the wages and what we can do there. And, and we, we talk about this every day almost about mm -hmm. how can we address the challenges we face as it relates to getting qualified candidates. One of the successful strategies we have used over the last few months 
is the mayor's internship program. So we've been very successful in the law department. They've had some really wonderful interns that have spent time um, in our law department assisting with some, and Willa can speak more to this, assisting them in the legal department. We also hosted an intern this summer in our community development department. We have a relationship now. I think we have some internships currently posted with Cleveland State School of Law and the Case Western Reserve University School of Law. And then the city also has a partnership with Carnegie Mellon um, University out of um, Pittsburgh. So we are looking and trying to be creative about getting talent in the city. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Madam, Madam Kyle. This, this is why I feel that this discussion is very, very important um, to get this information out in all avenues that we can get this information out to the people. Uh, Councilman Austin, you have anything? Um, I don't at this point, but I do want to appreciate the fact that um, we're actually looking out for um, those interns so they get the requisite skills so they go out there to respect them to the business world and be ready. Yes. Um, this is ground for those folks, and, and I ask that we reach out to other areas and you know inspire those interns and, and get some of that uh, exceptional professional performance. What happens? Spend the exceptional professional pay, you know, as the intern to kind of go through the system. So, more to follow. Um, looking forward to more internships throughout the whole city hall. So, this could be a, a place where people can come and get the requisite skills, and we could also get the, the business taken care of um, by the talent that they bring with them through their training process, process and program. Yes, we were successful in hosting, I think, over seven interns in the past. Year. We even had a um, graphic design intern work with us this summer who, who did some photo work for us. So we do know the value of the interns. And just as a follow-up, we will make sure council is notified when we um, host that live here, work here job fair so that you can assist us in getting the word out. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. That was, that was my next, that was my question. Thank you, Ms. Kyle. Um, so, so we don't have a solid date yet. We're going to keep us up. Yes, we're looking to host it um, possibly the third week of October. I have some follow-up work with Ohio Means Jobs, but I'll definitely keep you posted. And, and the key is we really want the people who live in our community to have access to the job opportunities in our community, and specifically those in City Hall. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your effort. We just so you know, we did just hire in our police department as a customer service representative, a longtime resident, Gail Horton. She now serves as the the kind of friendly face of our police window. And she's a longtime resident. So we did just recently hire an East Cleveland resident in that position. Thank you. That will bring smiles to a few faces, I believe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to get an update from police and IT later. I do know um, we have legislation for new body cameras, so that's that's perfect. So now we're going to move on to legislation. Madam Clerk, resolution number 64-21, please. Resolution number 64-21. A resolution confirming the mayor's appointment of Reverend Phyllis Mosley to the East Cleveland Civil Service Commission for a term expiring December 31st, 2024. This is requested by Mayor Brandon L. King, sponsored by Ernest Smith, Counselor at Large. As you all know, oh, thank you, Madam Clerk. As you all know, we need, we, uh, the rules. Excuse me, uh, Councilor yeah. Smith. Aren't you Ward? Aren't, aren't you Ward? Th aren't you Ward Three, Councilor, rather than yeah. at large? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Thank you for catching me. Yes, <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. All right. 
As you all know, the mayor has to appoint three members to the Civil Service Commission. Um, you know, Republican and a Democrat. Ms. Phyllis Mosley is a Republican. Um, I want to read, uh, read a little bit. Phyllis A. Mosley is listed and has her address and is affiliated with the Republican Party. Phyllis is registered to vote in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. Phyllis Mosley lives in the city of East Cleveland uh, in Ward 3B, this Congressional District 11, House District 8, Senate District 25, County District 421371, School Board District, the city of East Cleveland. Uh, Councilman Austin has, uh, you have any questions or concerns from Ms. Phyllis Mosley? Is Ms. Phyllis Mosley on the line? That's a good question. See, I don't see her online. Ms. Mosley was not online and she was not made aware of this meeting, but I'll make sure she's at the um, council meeting. In, in addition, I think it should be pointed out that Ms. Mosley is a longtime East Cleveland resident. She's lived in East Cleveland for decades. Uh, she's a, a senior lady who retired, uh, is retired from the Calgary County Board of Elections. And I'm sure she'll bring very valuable insights into the Civil Service Commission. Yes, thank you. I'm familiar with Ms. Mosley. Hi, I am also familiar with Ms. Mosley. Um, I also like to sponsor this legislation so to make sure that we start getting a little bit closer to where we need to be to make sure we meet all our um, responsibilities as a city. So this is one of those areas where we were lacking. Um, we had our, our audit and opportunity to fix it is something we should all strive to do. So I support. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And with that, with that uh, consensus, we will move. Yes, move it. Resolution number 64-21 to the regular council meeting because unfortunately we don't have agenda, agenda review meeting necessary. Um, we will move this to the agenda for the regular council. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, next we have remarks from our great public. Hearing none, seeing none in present. Councilman Austin, any last remarks? Um, I do. I want to start out by asking us to um, help each other as we look forward to what we have to do in the future. If we have um, information, solutions, plans that need to be shared, let's start sharing those plans to make us a better city, a better community, and better as individuals. Um, I had a talk with a young man the other day and we were talking about voting. And he said, well, he's been um, incarcerated before and you know, he, he feels like he lost his right to vote. And I wanna advise our young folks that you don't lose your right to vote unless you are incarcerated at the time of the election. So they will, not release you. Well, they will not release you in order to vote. However, as soon as you are released from your incarceration, you are authorized and or responsible for voting. I don't want to take voting for granted, but I do want to make sure that we expel some of the misnomers that influence our community's ability to act. And I would tell you that we need to get that word out there that people who have had um, legal trouble, unless, unless it is specific to a voting violation, then you are authorized to vote in all elections. So, be clear, my people, respectfully. We have rights that we have to exercise because a lot of people gave up lives, gave up a lot so that we can have the right to vote. And I ask that you continue to strive to exercise those rights and privileges that people have died for you to have today. So please exercise those rights. And, and you know, oftentimes we have to get out and get the information for ourselves. 
And once we verify the information, we should share with those who are, who are negatively impacted with bad information. So continue to do the right thing by us as a community. And we do right by each other and share the information that is beneficial to us so that our generations to come will not be negatively impacted by misinformation. Thank you very much. And that's all I have. I do appreciate everybody on the line today. Thank you, Councilor Smith. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And be blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Austin. I want to thank my colleagues. I want to thank uh, Madam Clerk. I want to thank our great directors um, that joined us, joined us tonight, that were able to join us tonight. And I want to, I want to thank the individuals that were not able to join us tonight. I felt it was very, very important for us and the people to get an update of the um, nine uh, uh, um, of the nine committees from the directors that we have. I want to thank our uh, uh, residents for joining us. As I as I say each and every week, these committee meetings are very very important just as important as our regular council meetings that we have on the first and third Tuesday of each month. With that, uh, I'd like to call for a dismissal. Be dismissed. Thank you. Adjourned. Let's go. Meeting is adjourned at 7 or 9 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.